So, yes, uh, Wednesday, we began, last Monday, the new my on stage class, Wednesday at Parkinson, and today's going to be more about training, uh, and I hope that you will answer, I, I'm actually delighted that uh, a lot of the students decided and were asking questions, and my universal answer up to today was, oh, I think about that, and now, hopefully, you're going to be as much answer as this tradition can give. Here's the announcements. Uh, the midterms are going to be back next week. You know, given what they are. And uh, the follow-up next is the seminar next semester. The 192 will be you in, in this class, because I've been up here going to lap, 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 lap. That's my students. We'll continue to do so. And uh, so the follow-up seminar is to give you a chance to really settle in and uh, do the talking and explore the relationship between any of these two things you're interested in, like your paper is going to be. And so that's what it is. Uh, the 290 goes out, oh, and in 192 there will be no extra reading unless you decide to, for your little talk, to have people read something, because you've got people not having much lab lab, you've got people going lab lab. Let's do it for the meaning of that more. Uh, in the graduate seminar, that will be on clinical applications, but there's a lot of background, so you actually will have it over all the graduate students who haven't been in here, and there will be reading some of which you've already done and some of which you haven't. And again, it will be the seminar. So, there's one question that the lecture of the next couple of weeks is not going to cover, so I'll answer now. And that was the question of what well, Buddhism changes. And is that from things within the tradition, is it just your discovery because you're dedicating, you know, the historic people which they realize, or is it social external effects? And of course, one answer is the two arise interdependently, but that doesn't satisfy us with our minds where they are. So, I believe that there's a strong component of changes happening from internal. Uh, just discoveries of meditation, and here are some of my nice Western logic reasons for it. Uh, Theravada meditators who don't have this officially in their tradition nonetheless start realizing things like this, and there's, um, so, you know, and people uh, who start meditating will go through an evolution like the historical evolution, uh, where they're being intentionally taken through that, and that's what the conceit of this class is, you know, go through it that way. Uh, so it seems to happen with individual minds, and, which I'll talk about later, uh, contemplative traditions outside Buddhism, the Western religions all have their meditative contemplative wing, usually suppressed but not destroyed, and things like this are actually happen to them, uh, as well as people in, you know, kind of uh, New Age or secular uh, traditions. And, of course, there's going to be interaction back and forth with social conditions. And, uh, so, what we do? Oh, so, so, today, now, there's from... Later Buddhism is actually comes from the Tibetan tradition. He's got a series of, I'm not sure what to say, a, a set of four sayings. And when the snake uncoils, snake uncoils, a flower blooms in the sky. Okay. That's a snake. You ever felt like that? He's all, you know, he doesn't look at this. Okay. Now, the snake uncoils in an instant by itself. You cannot get a snake to uncoil by grabbing it and pulling it over the stone. Um, and it looks at you with that face we just saw. Uh, but when it's ready, it uncoils by itself, and then the flower blooms, the sky flower, because Shunita has released everything else, and the babi can gather nectar there is the bee. But we won't talk about this part today. Uh, you can't see a cloak from the hair on the back of the floor. Never mind about that for today. Okay, so, first, the snake knot uncoils. So your mind can go. And when the snake knot of the mind uncoils, then you get. So, all the, the whole first part of the class, as you may know, they're all the descriptions of things are, and they were in, and they why there was something bad and evil about all of the great lines of working in things are, feel trapped and lost and you know, undoing habits is slow and peace and yoga, dana, by dana, trying to get rid of a habit, you no know, spontaneous tradition of habits, it was taken, acts. Now, the Shunita was going to be spoken of a sudden Shunita, sudden flips, all at once. Of the mind sort of flips and you see a flash of lightning in the night sky reveals, for instance, so you can't see in the night sky. Now, this is something that in daily, I mean, this sounds like no heavy natural philosophy or something, but we have this, oh, and life is partly tolerable, uh, whatever it is, because we have these little sips of this in daily life all the time. So let's find something. I remember Elga. Oh, you have no idea. Looking at you when I was talking about that, it was some really good dream. Okay, so how about this? <laughs> <laughs> and descriptions of expression. We had, a, a, you know, kind of addicted this good. You know. <laughs> notice, as you see, I'm trying not to pick ones because, you know, different strokes for different folks, they correct differently, but notice if you like one of them, what happens in your kind of mind and body? Uh, it's here, big thing these days. Ignorance, animal. <laughs> 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 I know the ignorance is on both sides. <laughs> 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 
where one of the ways that you have these little releases. And another one is learning about someone who got what he wanted and, and can make them happy after all. Ooh, yum. Harvey. <laughs> Here's that. I mean, why do you like Harvey? Psycho. Jack Mullen and the thing that really and, you know, the classic screen moment. You know, you know that you are not really in it. And somehow that combination of knowing it's not you and yet getting into it and going along with it and then this, the screen, remember, when I dropped the chair and walked out my and then, ah, it's the release and then we go by the release. There are people who must see dreams. There's a moment in dreams when you realize your dreams. Ah, release. Also, whether it's lucid or not, if you're ever able to do this in an obviously dream, but um, you're fall, about to fall off a cliff where the monster is grabbing your car is coming at you and you're trying to get away, you can actually die in the dream. There's a great release at first, you're still there. You're still your dream and you wake up and people record this all the time. So the next time that the monster is grabbing you or whatever say, you think to do so. Oh, hi monster, go ahead. Okay, that. okay, now, in, in ways of this kind of experience of release, the freedom is, it's stable, more stable, totally. Stable meaning it's going to recur in more than one moment. And it applies to everything, so it's seen through the whole of samsara of the other people. And kind of the rest of the time is there. Yeah. Alright, so when release, then what? But what usually happens is, you know, something that's bothering us, someone tells a joke, and that, and you feel better, and up your immune function kicks in, you know, all the good things about it. And then you say, but, it's very strange. Notice your mind that something's bothering you, you're mad at someone, and you forget that for a minute, and then your mind says, oh, but, 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 one is the whole compassion, warmth, love, you know, that young dimension. And the other is the deep nature of essence. Today, I'm going to talk about interdependence. Next week, we get the warm yummy. And then after that, <coughs> uh, yes, later Buddhism has a kind of absolute. And just by saying this way, kind of Buddhist heresy, but uh, all things say, that's what it is. It's just not the sort of conceptual thing that our, our mind does. But we'll get to that. So, on the same time. And note that after Shunyata, uh, the whole world is still there. At least, you feel freedom. The world is still arising, but at our end, it's no more buts. Okay. And it's a world of experience. So, and the interdependence is where you now have you've gone into the depth of things. Now your the camera is panning out, and you see more and more and more things included. So this is the first take on the flower bloom. So now are the six of interdependence. Words, I mean, color adjectives are like big and small. They depend on you. You don't have a notion of big without a notion of what's not a big. And it's also dependent on what the object is, right? So a big ant is a lot smaller than a very small galaxy. And likewise, good and bad as concepts. Dictionaries, you go to, this is when you're learning a foreign language is when it really strikes home, but to then dictionary, you look up the meaning of the word, and what does it do? It doesn't determine other words. A cat is a four-legged mammal. Those who don't know what a mammal is, you can look that up. That is under the order of species and so on. The, um, a, a huge leap was made in the and when a computer scientist at MIT wanted to program his computer, which was in the early 70s, to understand the word machine. Now, a computer is a machine, so it kind of had the problem we do when we say, what is man? Uh, and it had additional problems because it couldn't learn by itself. It was just sitting there, you know, it, he had to figure out what to put in it. Well, for, for his doctoral dissertation, well, a couple of years later, uh, he discovered that he had to tell it the whole world because each concept that he put in so that it could understand the machine, you know, like read a similar story that had machine in it, had to have other concepts, and they had to have other concepts, and, and they had to know all kinds of stuff about the concepts. So this ended up with people realizing, people in the field of cognitive psychology realizing, that you have not only a dictionary, but a whole encyclopedia in your head, and that if one of these uh, machines going to understand the story, you had to have both, and that is still the important part. <coughs> so it's real world. Um, let's start with our body. Let's say, look at a single cell in the body. That cell is in constant interdependence with everything else that's going on in the body. For it to get the nutrients it needs, for it to be able to get rid of its waste, for it to do the job that it's supposed to do, it's part of the whole system. And likewise, the ecology of the material world, and that's why it's so resistant to everybody's simple solutions, because everything is interdependent with everything else. Um, 
there's a whole branch of mathematics that tries to deal with the independence of most popular forms of chaos theory where something is going along with it. Um, it's getting more and more out of equilibrium, and that's one particular thing at home. Uh, so where it said that the flapping of the butterfly wings in Hong Kong can be the little thing that tips the weather so that you get a cyclone over its tent. People enjoy that. So, uh, for the psych majors, you know, the statistics we have, you can do one or two little interactions, and you get to many interactions, nobody understands your research anyway, and it's not what's called cute, and we really don't know how to deal with massive, the massive interdependence, because that means, no, the research is no people. Oh, we are so interdependent with other people at all levels, and this thing of cultural, this is supposed to be an individualistic culture, and, you know, we've got some cultural ideals about that. You know, we think different ads with a little yes, yes, and stuff like that. Uh, we picture Gandhi or, um, or whoever, uh, Martin Luther King, think they're doing the rappel. And those work beautifully in our culture, but not in all cultures. Um, but that's in relation to what people, if you're saying, I'm, you know, as the old writer thought, I want to be alone. That's a relation with things with other people. Like, I'm going to get away from this, I'm sure, right? It only makes sense when you're kind of this. Likewise, you know, I don't care what anyone thinks of me. I'm going to board ahead of millions of dollars on the head of my company. Well, you're saying that to other people. Okay. And if you got this, you have a uh, <coughs>